unless you're diving into the ocean, all the coral you see is this like bleached coral. And I think people just are like, oh, that's, you know, it's, it's the skeleton of the coral basically. And people are like, oh, that's coral and just leave it at that. And it's like, well, no, like this is like, you know, like it was living and it was vibrant and I like had all these colors, like even ultraviolet colors. And now, you know, like we just kind of, we shrink it down into this, like, all right, this is, this is coral. And then we, I think it really dilutes the the problems that are going on because people don't recognize that as death. They just recognize that as like, oh, it's, you know, like, this is what I see. So this is what it is. There's this huge duality that humans face of like, we're constantly destroying our environment. And then we are trying to create new things to replace um, what was already existing perfectly. And it just kind of is this artificial mess. I think that's really important with coral because we're constantly destroying it. And then we're as scientists, they're like tr- scrambling to figure out how to fix it. And it's like, why are, why are we adding, t- you know, like, artificialness to this natural environment in our natural world when like this was already perfect and we should just be trying to maintain that perfection versus replace it with our own um and so especially when I was making these pieces I kind of felt like I was doing that I was like all right like you're being inspired by something that's existing perfectly in a way you're trying to replicate this like how does that totally make sense from a distance you can see them as these just kind of like block color forms. And then as you get closer, you start seeing more and more detail. And it was kind of this like inviting in of like, okay, we're going to ease you into this versus just shove it in your face. It goes into as well, um, because when coral is bleached, it's turned white. So it was really important to make sure that that porcelain was going to be maintained as white to help reflect on that. The black um, form was brought in to help address that duality between destruction and creation. And I think a lot of times humans equate the color white to life and the color black to death. And so it was that, um, let's, let's bring this forward and let's talk about this. Um, there's like many parts coming together to make a whole. And so you can see that on the coral piece, there's like hundreds of these individually sculpted polyps that, um, are com- coming together to make a whole coral. Really, I just wanted an opportunity to sit down for like a really extended period of time and do things that were monotonous and repetitive over and over and over again. So this really offered me that opportunity. And then as I, developed into what became clear was coral, then my idea kind of changed into being, um, okay, we now we need to speak on the environmental issues that are happening because how, you know, I think it's really hard to create something that's um, invocative of nature without speaking on the crisis that we're all going through globally. But I think this idea is really important because um, that is our reality in this world is that like, I'm, yes, I'm one human, but I am millions of cells and those cells are millions of atoms and those atoms are a bunch of electrons and neutrons. And then it goes back up on the other scale of, yes, I'm one human, but I'm part of a family and that family is part of a community. And um, we go back up, you know, to get larger. And so there's this idea of like both on a macro and micro level, we are just like one small part of a bigger thing. And I think as it humans, we're really, um, vulnerable to feeling lonely and so to combat that loneliness it's this idea of like you are not alone you are part of a bigger system or there's smaller systems that are part of you and I think it's really important to um, emphasize the idea of like we are all connected in one way or another.